written my definitions again a little bit higher up on the board so I can make some more space. So here we are. Injective means nothing on the right gets hit more than once. Surjective means everything on the right gets hit. And bijective means it's both injective and surjective. Right? Let's have a look at another example. Um, let's have a look at f going from the integers to the integers where f of a equals a plus 1. Right, so let's think about, let's think about a little picture of this one. The integers we can picture as a whole load of dots in a row. Maybe I'll do them a bit bigger. And here we've got the same dot in a row. And each one goes to the dot one down. So let's just think about this intuitively for a second. Do we think it's injective? Injective means nothing on the right gets hit more than once. And it's true, right? Everything gets hit exactly once. So this does look like it's injective. And what about surjective? Everything on the right gets hit. Well, let's see. If you're, this one looks like it didn't get hit, but that's because I just didn't draw this dot here. There's actually another dot there that would go to that one. And this one will go to that one down there. So it does seem that everything on the right gets hit. So it looks like this thing is bijective. Because it looks like it's injective and surjective. But we only used the informal definitions to think about that. So now let's see if we can use the actual formal definitions. Because the informal ones help us think about it but the formal ones help us actually prove things about it. So let's first of all show that, um, that f is injective. So what we have to do is suppose that f of a1 equals f2. Suppose f of a1 equals f of a2. Well, what does that actually mean? What's f of a1? That's a1 plus 1. And what's f of a2? That's a2 plus 1. But look, if a1 plus 1 equals a2 plus 1, we can take 1 away from both sides, and that gives us that a1 equals a2. And this is what, exactly what we had to show, right? We had to say, suppose f of a1 equals f2. We had to show that that implied a1 equals a2. And that's exactly what we've done. So it's true. So now let's show that f is surjective. So we have to show that for any element on the right-hand side, there's an element on the left-hand side that gets sent to it. So let's say, suppose, let b be in the right-hand side, so it's an integer. Now we have to pick some integer on the left that gets sent to it. So let's pick a equals b minus 1. Okay? Then f of a equals b minus 1 plus 1, but that equals b. So we've shown that given any b on the right-hand side, we can find an a on the left-hand side such that f of a equals b, which is exactly what we had to do. So it's surjective, therefore f is indeed bijective. Right? If we wanted to show something was not surjective, we would have to show that there exists an element on the right-hand side that does not get hit by anything on the left. 
So the next one we'll do will be like that. Um, that deals with a plus 1. But now let's do, let's do squaring. So now let's do f of a equals a squared. Now let's think about that for a second. Do we think that this is going to be injective? Well, we can definitely get two things on the left that have the same square because we can take the positive number and the negative number and they'll both square to the same thing, right? What about surjective? Well, there are definitely some integers that don't get hit when you square things because you can never hit a negative number. So this is going to be neither injective nor surjective. So now we can see how you prove that something is not injective and not surjective. Right? F is not injective. We have to we have to prove that there exists something to violate this condition. So we have to show that there exists an a1 and an a2 such that f of a1 does equal f of a2, but a1 does not equal f2. So let's just write that down. This is what we have to do to show something is not injective. We must show, we must find a1 and a2 such that f of a1 equals f of a2, but a1 does not equal a2. Well, I can do that, right? I can take a1 to be minus 1 and a2 to be 1. E.g., a1 equals 1 and a2 equals minus 1. Right? Those are not equal, but 1 squared equals minus 1 squared equals 1. So that shows that f of a1 equals f of a2, but a1 does not equal a2. Okay? So that shows it's not injective. So now let's show that f is not Subjective. So what do we have to do? We have to show we must find B, any B in the right hand side, such that no matter what A we take on the left hand side, F of A does not equal B, such that for all A in A, F of A does not equal B. Well, there are two ways we could do it, go about this for the integers. We could either find a positive integer, which is obviously not a square, like 2, or we could take a negative number. So, for example, we could take 2, since the square root of 2 is not an integer, there will never be an integer that squares to 2, or we could take something like minus 1, since the square root of minus 1 is also not an integer. We only have to find one place that's not surjective. We don't have to find all the places. We don't have to provide a general theory. We don't even have to observe that, you know, you can't take the square roots of negative numbers or anything. We just have to find one place where there's nothing on the left that will go to it. So that's how you prove that something is not injective and not surjective.